Hello everyone. Once again, we would like to take a walk from now from Port 25 to um, Reis Engelhorn Museum, where Sefia takes place right now. And I'm, he I'm here with uh, Sylvie Crespo at the Biennale 2022. And the Biennale is called From Where I Stand. And we are walking to the exhibition called Narratives of Resistance. And first of all, I would like to quote a part of the concept so that everyone can maybe get an idea of what we're seeing right now. So um, the Narratives of Resistance exhibition focuses on little noticed conflicts between governments and po uh, local populations. The large scale lithium mining in northern Portugal, the protected struggle over Arivasi ter territory in central India and the ecological challenges Nepal faces in the Chitwan re region. All these disputes have serious consequences for the inhabitants and their environment. So, hello Sylvie. Hello. Would you uh, please in introduce yourself to the audience? Yes, so I'm Sylvie Crespo. I'm a French Portuguese photographer and I've been developing since 2019 uh, a project called the Land of Elephants about lithium mining in the north of Portugal. Uh, a conflict that uh, I think fits in the concept of the exhibition because it's quite unnoticed uh, in Europe. Um, and that's it. That's it. So what, what you did right now is uh, answering the question I, would, I, would, I wanted to ask right now is why do you think your work is part of this exhibition? Well, uh, I think Narratives of the Resistance stands as um, a platform to showcase struggles that are unnoticed because happening in places that we don't really see in the news. And in my case, it's true that except for uh, a German channel, uh, TV channel, there has been no publicity around what's going on in Portugal. And uh, this is, I think, the case because we are talking about quite excluded geographically, economically uh, regions in the north of Portugal that people don't really know about. Okay. And you, you, you're working as a photographer, as, yeah. a, as an artist with the medium of photography. Yeah. Why did you use photography for telling stories like this? We live in an era of images and I think images are a medium that almost everybody today uses and can grasp and understand or at least react. So I think it's a really interesting uh, way to engage uh, with people, not just in Portugal, but uh, in a broader geographical scope. Okay, and uh, as it, it, uh, maybe in your case, it's, uh, it's about lithium and some cities affected by the lithium work over there. So could you tell us something about this lithium and what happens over there? Yeah, so uh, basically something that needs first to be said is that Portugal has a history with mining. Uh, we have a lot of mountains and lithium can be found uh, in rocks. So it appears that a few years back, uh, a researcher found out that Portugal allegedly has a huge reserve of lithium, which is a metal needed to ensure ecological transition. So basically to electrify society and comply with our kind of European Green Deal, yeah. we need more lithium. Uh, so that's why Portugal now is being targeted by many projects of lithium mining. But it's something that populations uh, oppose because once again, they have experience of what mining means. Uh, let's remember that Portugal had some of the biggest tungsten mines uh, during the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And we are still seeing the outcome uh, of the termination of that mining activity. Okay. In pollution of water, uh, completely excavated mountains, uh, destruction of ecosystems and so on. So what do we see? What will we see in this exhibition? What, what, what can we see in your work? So in this exhibition, uh, you will have uh, a set of images that is a kind of introduction uh, to the land of elephants and to that region that is a very uh, dear region to me because that's where uh, my paternal family comes from. So it's, uh, let's say it's a kind of brief overview of uh, a place where something might happen soon meaning a destruction of mountains and of a way of living. Uh, you will see so images and you'll see a short video uh, that okay. I made based on photographs I took at protests because I think it's really important to say those people 
are not silent. Okay. And even though we don't see them, they exist. And I think this is a perfect platform to show them and to say they are there. Please reach out and emphasize their voices. So you, you, there, there is this uh, protest pictures and yeah. what else can we see? And you can see, so basically in the photographs, the idea was to show faces because that places, those places are not marooned. They are inhabited by people. Uh, so that's one thing, the, the people component is important, but we'll always also see uh, the first traces of prospection uh, because indeed companies have been already testing uh, the rocks and you will also see the outcome of mining because for me it was really important to revive uh, the memory of the previous mining activities in that region and there is in particular a shot of a mine that ceased to operate in the 80s, but that is still uh, there and with what it contains of pollution, meaning uh, uh, dirty waters, old machinery, rusty, uh, being completely engulfed into the nature. And this is something I think that you will see. Ah, okay, because when I looked at this body of work, you everyone can see on your website parts of this yeah. work, I thought that, okay, how to use photography for something that's hidden beneath the surface? Now, like, you're talking about lithium, yeah. but it's a, everything we see in your work it's, it has a feeling for me that you always see something like the, how can I say, uh, the symptoms. Yeah. That the happen. thing is that uh, even though we have the, the belief that photography shows in the end, it shows only a very minimum part of things. So you can only imply. And of course, then you have to really dig deeper to understand what you're looking at. And I really think that's what also my work is about. Uh, because of course you went to the website and you saw another part of the work that is not presented now because it's way bigger than ah, okay. that. It's, the, what I saw on your website is not presented right now. Uh, some images only, okay. uh, because I mean, I have more than hundred of images. Uh, there, but I had to make a selection, of course. Uh, but every image has a meaning. It has been taken in a place of meaning, be it a former mine, be it uh, an abandoned company of cutting stone, because it was a, a huge argument by Portuguese government saying that an open cast mine is nothing more than just a place where you cut rocks, which yeah. is completely untrue. Okay. Uh, so everything is chosen because it has a meaning. It's never uh, random. for free and random. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, that's what, what I would expect from an artist to use photography for a meaning. Yes, well, here I think I, I really try to use it to talk about a place that I love, uh, to talk about people that I admire because they have a way of living that I admire. Um, and they really, I think, pose very interesting questions because when they oppose those projects, they are saying we are fully aware that, is, that there is a global warming going on. Uh, proof is, a few weeks ago, we had a big, big drought okay. in a place where it's not, not supposed to happen. Okay. So we know, uh, we know this soil, we know this landscape, we know what mining is. And our question is, do you think that by destroying mountains, ecosystems by cutting trees by polluting tremendous amounts of water that you will solve the global warming problem don't okay. you think that we need to step back and think as a society and propose more sustainable solutions and maybe to slow down and change the way we consume consume less uh, demand that the products we have don't last only two years mm -hmm. Uh, so I think it, it, in that sense, for me, using photography was also a way to give them an homage and yeah. give those places uh, an homage. Okay, and you talked before that there are also portraits on people. Yeah. Scene. Is there, maybe you can give an example of what people we see. Yeah, for instance, uh, the portrait that hangs uh, at the entrance of the museum, it's the portrait of Lucilio. And Lucilio lives uh, in a small village called Roburdel. Uh, 
mm -hmm. uh, is involved in a civilian movement that has been really uh, fighting against those projects uh, already in 2018, I think. So he's been very involved, he and his wife and his sons. Um, he's been really trying to push things, uh, protesting, uh, driving for miles to go to Lisbon and to protest. And Lucilio basically just lives a very simple life. He has a, a house that he has uh, from his family in the middle of mountains. Uh, he lives because he has uh, his own garden where he grows vegetables. He has chickens, basically asks nothing. He has a very simple life, very mm -hmm. sustainable. And he's now saying, OK, if you go on the mountain right in front of my house, and we are not talking kilometers away, yeah. we're just in saying here in my uh, garden it's gonna vanish it's gonna be uh, blown up okay and i'll be living with deflagrations all day with smokes fumes machines so the people who are photographed are people who are against the mine and who are involved uh in this protest okay so in, so in that case they don't they don't get involved in this mining, they're just affected by the mining. Yes, yes. Do you think that there, there are ways to, to, uh, to get them connected to the mining? Maybe they can help or whatever? Or are they just against something? No, they are against it because they basically know that this mining is a threat to their uh, way of living yeah. because if you destroy that they don't eat they die yeah, okay. when you're 60 where do you go when you lose your house mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think they want to connect with mining industry because they know what it is you have this big company they come in 10 years they live with the profit and they leave everything as it is that's what happened until today in Portugal with mines Oh, okay. So uh, <laughs> it's really yeah, yeah. hard to try to connect. Okay, and in, in, in this case, all I saw on your website when I uh, researched a bit before our talk, um, that, the, that your whole body of work is in black and white. Normally it's just a yeah. technical question, but in this case I thought maybe, maybe I can ask you why did you choose yeah. to only use black and white pictures and especially there the contrast is very, very hard. Yeah, so uh, basically for this topic precisely, it's black and white. Uh, for a very simple question, uh, I didn't want people, first of all, to be distracted by color. But there is also a very pragmatic uh, thing, was that I wanted to use my own films and develop my roles. Okay. Uh, so I'm not familiar with color, so for me it was more convenient because the idea was really for me to get involved and also carry on a reflection on my own production and making. Uh, as far as uh, the, the contrast of the images is concerned, I think it's a concrete uh, contrast, indeed, a very metallic, very harsh, because we are talking about something really harsh mm -hmm. and we are talking about a metal. But it's also a more conceptual contrast because we are talking about contrasts as well. Uh, companies who come from abroad, from big cities where they have money, and people who live inland with no money who are just... It's David against Goliath. In that sense, it's yeah. also a huge contrast. Yeah, of so everything for me in that black and white worked out this way. And there is also an aspect, as I, as I say, it's a an effective landscape. And when I photographed, the black and white really also translated the feelings I have for that place and the tension and the sadness I may sometimes experience uh, when I think that this could be destroyed. Mm -hmm. So you said you develop every film yourself? Yes. And you, you do it always when you? No. Uh, it happened for this project because, again, I think when I started working, uh, there was this idea, okay, I'm, I'm going to work on something. Uh, first of all, I want to use a camera, not a digital one, but a, a camera that wouldn't have a, a battery. So that was the first starting ah, okay. point no, of yeah. thinking. I understand. And then I thought, okay, I have all these rolls at home. I'm not going to buy a new stock. I'm going to use this. 
So let's see what comes out. Some were expired, so they turned out pretty okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I had also some bottles of expired chemicals. So this idea was more to say, okay, let's make choices and say that maybe if we want to change things, we also need to embrace that everything may not be perfect. We may not have everything we want always when we want and just also embrace this kind of factor. Yeah, and you have to start by yourself. You have to start with, exactly. with yourself and your decisions. Exactly. For me, that was really um, something really important because, of course, if things need to change, it starts with us. And yeah. uh, even though it's minor choices, those choices may have an impact. For instance, I know that I won't have like all the, this silver gelatin wasted somewhere. It's being used, okay, it's expired, but... It works out. It works as out. We, as we see, as we will see that it works out. As we out. will see, <laughs> exactly. So, and it's okay. Okay, Sylvie, that's yeah. it. I think we're there. Yes. Now we can have a that's look. That's Lucilio. <laughs> yeah. That's Lucilio, the one you talked about. Exactly. Okay, so let's get in. Let's have a look. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And I'm very excited to see... Me too. ...something about your work. Me too. Hello.